Hi, you guys. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to go over the answers to your review sheet. Again, make sure that you have tried them, please, before you just take my answers. I realize we got some glare going on, but we'll do the best we can. If f of x equals 10 times 2 to the x, then which of the following represents the value of f of 0? So again, the x is missing and the 0 replaces that x. So we're going to go into that equation. I'm going to try and bring you in a little closer. Um, we're going to go into that equation and replace the x with the 0. So f of 0 would equal 10 times 2 to the 0. Remember, we talked about this in PEMDAS. You have to make sure that you do the um, exponents first. 2 to the 0 power equals 1. 1 times 10 is 10. So the function's value at 0 is 10. That's choice number 3. Which of the following is an increasing exponential function? Okay, well, first of all, that is not exponential. That is not exponential. Exponential, you have to have the x as part of your exponent. It's not the whole thing. All right, the part that decides increasing is the base or the growth factor, the thing that's inside. Um, if we want to increasing, it's got to be bigger than 1. Therefore, the answer is 2. Which of the following could be the equation of the exponential function shown below? Well, there's a couple of things that I can use as hints here. My y-intercept is between 5 and 10, so it can't be those two. And now we have to use the growth factor to make the rest of the decision. This is a decreasing one, which means that my growth factor has to be less than 1. Therefore, the correct answer is number Number four, the population of Ketchum High School has been decreasing by 5% a year. If the population is currently 2,600 students, which of the following is closest to its population two years from now, this is an exponential decay question. So I'm going to get my exponential decay formula, which is... Oops, sorry. Decreasing. I gave you increasing. Okay. Um, A is the starting amount. So that's 2,600. 1 minus the percentage. It's been decreasing by 5% a year. And we want to know its population two years from now. All right, so I'll put this together. 1 minus 0 0.05 is 0.95. At that point, you can put that whole thing into your calculator. 2,600 times 0.95 raised, whoops, that's a 6, sorry, raised to the second power. I get 2, 3, 4, 6.5. It says closest to its population. So I would say choice 2. All right, let's keep going. Remember that formula I will put on the board for those of you who are taking the test in school. Those of you who are taking the test remotely, you may have your, pop, your growth, exponential growth and decay formula in front of you because they are on the reference sheet when it's time to take your exams. Number five, the population of bacteria is increasing at a rate of 7.5% per hour. If there are originally 275 bacteria, which of the following equations models the population of bacteria after its original 275 bacteria were measured? Okay, so again, nope. All right, then we know that the starting amount at 275 has to be the, the thing in front of the parentheses, so nope. And then do we use the strict percent or do we need to do something with it? Well, they're increasing, so we need to do something with it. The correct answer is number four. If the first two terms of a geometric sequence are four and 12, which of the following would be the tenth term? So you can do this a couple of different ways. You can just list it out if you want to. So the first term is four. The second term is 12. What's happening? Geometric sequences, remember, is multiplying. So we're multiplying by three. So the third one would be 36 and on and on and on. Or you can use the formula, which is the starting amount, 
times the growth factor. If I want the 10th term, then I have to do that how many times? Nine times, put that into my calculator. Four, parentheses, three, carrot nine, and my answer is choice three. Radioactive material has been given a mass of this, where the mass is in grams and the time t is in years, which of the following gives the average rate of change of the mass over the integral two to five. All right, so what we really need are two points. We need two something and we need five something so that we can do rate of change, which is really just a fancy way of saying slope. If I were you guys, I would make your calculator do the work for you. Go to your y equals screen, input this, 126 times 0.84, whoops, there is no t, so you just use an x. Make sure you use the caret so that your, your calculator knows you're doing an exponent. Then go to your table. Oh, which one of you was playing with my calculator last because my table is at 10,000. Oh, there I fixed it. Okay, so two, I have about, I'm going to write 88.9. And for five, I have 52.7. Okay, so now I'm going to do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So 52.7 minus 88.9 over 5 minus 2. The bottom number is 3. 52.7 minus 88.9 is negative 36.2. Divide that by 3. And I get negative 12.0. Seven. Sorry, I heard a weird noise. I wasn't sure what it was. Um, so that would be this thing. Okay. All right, let's look at numbers eight and nine. An object's speed can be modeled with the equation s equals 24 times 1.06 to the t where S represents the speed in miles per hour and T represents the amount of time that is passed in seconds. Given interpretation of parameters 24 and 1.06 from the equation. Okay, so what's the 24? 24 is the starting amount. Well, in this particular example, the starting amount is the object's speed. So 24 is the starting, let's, let's say this, 24 miles per hour is the starting speed. 1.06 is the growth factor. What does it tell me? It tells me that it's increasing because it's bigger than one. How much is it increasing by? So in my head, I'm going to do one take away 0.06 to figure out what it's increasing by. No, 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 no. I don't need to do that. I just do it in my head. 1.06, take away 1, and it's increasing by 0.06, which is 6%. Sorry. All right, number nine, an exponential function f is shown in the table. Determine the equation for it, and f of x equals a times b of x form. Okay, so the a, again, is the starting amount right there. The b is the growth factor. What's happening each time? It's multiplying by 3 to the x. That one's done. That easy, that quick. I'm trying to keep this short so that it doesn't take too long on YouTube to upload. Max deposits money into a savings account that earns 3.5% interest applied annually. If Max initially deposits $450 into the account, how much money does the account hold after five years if Max does not deposit or withdraw any additional materials? All right, so let's write our equation. Our equation is y equals starting amount. Is the money growing? Yep, it's earning. So 1 plus, remember we don't actually use the 3.5. 
we make it a decimal, 0 0.035, and we want to know how much it will hold after five years. So I will put this together, 1.035 to the 5, and again with my grapher. Grapher is going to be your friend on this quiz here. I get it. Now, something, Regent's tip here. 534.458375. Okay? Write it all out. Then go back because we're talking about money and make it look like money. So money has two decimal places. What does the eight tell the five to do? It tells it to bump up. So I would say my answer is $534.46. Don't jump right from here to here because those two things don't equal. Okay? And they'll mark you off for it. Oh, you can't see it because of the glare. And I can't make the glare go away. So that's 46 cents. Determine the equation of the exponential function shown. So what I do is I make a quick table. All right. My zero, zero is here. So my y-intercept is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Oops, 0, 10. Okay. 1 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2, I'm not sure of, 3, I'm not sure of. This is actually enough because what's happening there is it's dividing by 2. We can't say dividing by 2. We have to say multiplying. So how do we take dividing by 2 and change it into multiplying? You make it a fraction. So what I'm doing is I'm multiplying by 1 half. So my formula is y equals 10, that's your y-intercept times one half to the x. I'm not going to write out how I got it because I just explained it to you. That's your y-intercept. There's your growth factor, which we got by pulling information off of there. Okay? Couple more. Function passes through the point 0, 0,8 and 124. Right equation of a linear function that passes, okay, so this is the stuff that we just did yesterday, of a linear function that passes through these two points and write an equation for the exponential function that passes through these two points. All right, so for the linear one, we have to start by finding the m. I'm going to call this point 2. I'm going to call this point 1. So 24 minus 8 over 1 minus 0, that's 1. That's 16, so my slope is 16. My y-intercept they gave me. Okay? My exponential, if I look at it like this, there's my y-intercept. What is my growth factor? What happened? We multiplied it by 3. How much greater is the exponential function's value at x equals 5, then the linear function's value. Show how you arrived at your answer. So I'm going to plug 5 into both of these. Then I'm going to find out how much bigger one is than the other. So 16 times 5 plus 8. 16 times 5 is 80. 80 plus 8 is 88. 8 times 3 to the fifth power. 8 times 3 to the fifth power is 1,944. How much bigger is that than this? 1,944 minus 88, 1,856. And that's my answer to that question. Okay. One last page to go here. Okay, number 13. A geometric sequence is defined using the following rule. Find the fourth term of the sequence, show how you arrived at your answer. Okay, so this tells me the starting one. The first one is 4. Okay, what does this mean? It means take the, for each one, take the answer of the one before it, 
and multiply it by negative 2. So for this one, I have to take the answer of the one before, which was 4, and multiply it times negative 2. That's negative 8. For this one, I have to take the answer of the one before, multiply it by negative 2. That answer is 16. Take the answer of the one before, multiply it by 2. It's negative 32. Take the answer of the one before, and multiply by negative 2, and that is 64. Okay? Number four, which is larger, the tenth term of an arithmetic sequence that begins with the term 0 and, ten, and 100, or the tenth term of a geometric sequence that begins with the terms 5 and 10? Show work that justifies your answer. Okay, so arithmetic sequence. The starting amount plus the increase. If it's tenth term, we're going to do it nine times. So that is going to be 900. Geometric sequence starts with 5. It's doubling. And again, if we want the tenth term, we have to do that 9 times. 5, parentheses 2, carat 9, 2,560. So, which is larger? The, X, uh, the geometric. sequence. And it says show work that justifies your answer so you can see it there, but you can also add 2560 is greater than 900. Okay? I'm going to slide up number 15. It's awfully low there. A local newspaper claims that the number of flu cases is increasing exponentially. Oops, if I'm not standing right in the way of it. On Monday, there were eight cases reported. On Tuesday, there were 12 cases of flu, and on Wednesday, there were 24 cases reported. On Thursday, there were 30. But it, was the newspaper's claim of exponential increase accurate? Justify your response. So create a list. That's what I would do. And we have to figure out how that list is changing. So Monday, there were eight. Tuesday, there were 12. Wednesday, there were 24. Thursday, there were 30. Is that an exponential increase? Well, it's not an arithmetic increase, is it? It's not adding each time. Um, so let's find out if the number is, we'll do our ratios. 12 over 8 reduces to 3 halves. So that's a ratio of 1 and a half. If we do this ratio, that's 2. Um, let's do 6. That's 5 fourths. Is that an exponential increase? No, because they're not changing by the same amount, are they? No. They have to be changing by the same. They have to be multiplying by the same number each time in order to be. Number 16, the first three terms of a geometric sequence, write a recursive rule for this sequence. What's the next term? All right, recursive starts with the original one. So the original one is 216. Then for each one after it, I take the answer of the one before it, and it's geometric, so we know we multiply. If you look at that and you can't figure out what it's multiplying by, remember we find that ratio, excuse me, the ratio, which means we take this and we divide it by that. So I'll do 144 divided by 216. I'm going to use my calculator to do that. 144 divided by 216 comes out to be 0 0.6666666, which means two thirds. So there's your recursive rule. What's the next term? Well, just take your 96 and do times two thirds. 96 times two thirds. And the next one is. I will um, also post a screenshot of all of the answers just in case there are things that you cannot see because of the glare. Remember to make sure that you've done your review. There is that extra kahoot if you need it. It's a little bit different because I had to formulate some of the questions a little bit differently. All right. Um, other than that, I will talk to you soon. Have a good day, you guys.